Good morning. You know, today has turned out quite a bit differently than we had originally planned. As you can see, I'm not streaming from the hall. I'm currently sitting in my house on the couch. Yesterday afternoon, this part of the UK went into uh, tier four restrictions, currently the highest restrictions in the UK, uh, which means we had to make some changes to our plans with very short notice. Uh, we were due to have an outdoor carol service this afternoon. However, given the news of the variation with the virus, and our desire to ensure that we're operating safely and appropriately, we made the sad and difficult decision to cancel our carol service for this afternoon. However, the reason I'm bringing you this message from my home is because at the hall right now, the amazing tech team are recording the band for the carol service. We still wanted to make sure we could do the carol service, so they're recording that, and we're gonna put it out on YouTube this afternoon at 4 p.m. It's gonna be a bit different than we had originally planned, but we wanna do everything we can to make sure that we are doing something uh, and, and bringing you a, a carol service, because we really wanted to celebrate that together. So now you can sing out loud, as loud as you like at home with gusto and don't even worry if you're off key or anything like that because no one else will notice you just sing sing your heart out and if you get the words wrong too it doesn't matter just sing your heart out i know it's different than we'd hoped and originally planned but we can still do something and we want to look for the opportunities to do what we can do uh, if you haven't yet subscribed to the YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification button so then you're notified when that goes uh, out this afternoon. So please make sure that you do that. You know, to get into the Christmas spirit even more, I'm really excited that this morning we have a worship song that the band have done uh, already in preparation for this morning and they have done a carol song which is come thou long expected Jesus.
Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Uh, wherever you're joining us from, I know it's a little bit different to what we've been doing of late, but it's, it's really great to, to have you joining this morning. Uh, please remember you can still chat and uh, contribute along on our chats alongside. Yeah, it's a slightly different format today, but it's just still really good to be together. And thank you for joining us for, for Church at Home. You know, we have been doing this series uh, over this last month called Adventure. Uh, and throughout this series, we've used this Advent season to look at faith as an adventure. You know, we're familiar with the Christmas story. We know about Mary and Joseph and shepherds and, and wise men. And, but what if we're so familiar with the story that we, we miss the humanity of it? What if Mary's questions, Joseph's concerns, the wise men's longings are like our own? What if their adventure of faith is like ours? What if their questions, their concerns, and their longings are the same ones that we have? What if the questions they ask are the same questions that we ask? And what if the answers that they received are the same answers that we need? That's what this series has been all about. You know, the Christmas story isn't about perfect selfies with filters that get rid of the wrinkles and make your eyes look a bit bigger. Uh -uh. The Christmas story is real people in a real place having a real adventure of faith in real life. That's what this series is all about. Today, we're going to be looking at the wise men, and we're going to be asking, what about their story speaks to our adventure of faith today? Now, it's in the book of Matthew where we have the, the reference to these wise men, or the, the magi, they were also called. It's in Matthew chapter 2, and it's verse 1 through to 12, and it says this, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem and asked, Where's the one whose star that we have seen? He is born King of the Jews. We have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was understandably disturbed, and all of Jerusalem with him. So when he called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. It says this, it says, In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, For this is what the prophet has written, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. So Herod called them wise men secretly and found out from them the exact time that the star had appeared. So he sent them to Bethlehem and he said, Go and search carefully for this child. As soon as you find him, report back to me so that I may also come and worship him. And after they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star that they had seen 
went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. When they got to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. And they opened their treasures and gave him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And after having been warned in a dream to not go back to Herod, they returned home a different way. Now, there are some things that we just don't know about these wise men. We don't know exactly where they came from. It says the East. So it could have been Iran, Iraq, Syria, the Yemen. It's a detail that we don't have. We also don't know how many there were. Some traditions say it could have been as many as 12. And a lot of places say there were three. It usually is three because there were three gifts. And also because three wise men fits on a Christmas card a little bit easier than 12 of them. Now, we also don't know exactly when they arrived. However, we do know Jesus was still quite young when they found him. There also are some things that we do know about them. Now, we do know that if they were wise women, then the women would have shown up on time, they would not have got lost, or if they had, they would have asked directions sooner. They probably would have brought a casserole, they would have helped deliver the baby, they would have uh, cleaned up a bit, made some dinner, and also given some practical gifts. So we know that they were men. They're traditionally called wise men. But if they're so wise, why did they get lost? If they're so wise, Why did they go and speak to the current reigning king and ask him if he knew where the new king was born? It's not a very smart move, really. So, I wonder why they're called wise men. Maybe they were wise because they were seeking. They were looking. They were curious. They were longing for answers to their questions, which is a pretty good place to start for all of us. I mean, are you curious? We also know that they had status, wealth, and education. They studied the stars, and in the ancient world, astronomy and astrology was lumped into the same thing. It was one science. They were likely very wealthy, and they would have been held in high esteem in their own society. People would have looked up to them. You know, they would have been regarded as successful. In some traditions, they are also regarded as rulers, leaders, or even some places call them kings, within their own countries. So maybe they were wise because they knew there was more to life than just being successful. In spite of their status, wealth, and education, they knew that those things would not ultimately bring fulfillment. Status, wealth, and education are still things that we strive for, we honor today. Those are the things that we still run after and feel like those things would make us feel valuable or make us worthy. You know, what do we think that we need to achieve nowadays in order to feel like we've arrived or been successful? You know, no one on their deathbed ever says, I wish I had spent more time at the office. Are you aware of what really matters in life? I mean, maybe they were wise because they were humble enough to look in an unexpected place to find an answer to the questions in life. You know, questions like, am I loved? Have I done enough? Is there a purpose for our lives? What is God like? Is there a God? And those answers were all found in Jesus. The gift that came in an unexpected way to show us what an unexpected God was like. 
Are you humble enough and willing to look in unexpected places for the real answers? Maybe they were wise because they were willing to surrender. You know, once they had found the one that they were looking for, once they had arrived and found the young child, it says they bowed down or they threw themselves down, they fell down, they prostrated themselves and worshipped. They surrendered. They gave what they had to Jesus. You know, this is not the normal reaction when you meet a young child. Uh, Imagine that you're at a family event and you've got your 16-month-old baby with you. You're just about to introduce them to Aunt Beryl and Uncle Joe. And as soon as you start to introduce your child, they, they throw their hands up and they throw themselves down on the floor and like kneel and, and worship before the child. Okay, so that's kind of a weird reaction to a baby. But it's not a weird reaction to a king. Are you willing to surrender? Maybe they were wise because they knew the value of real treasure. You know, the gifts they brought were costly. They brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They gave out of what they had. They gave out of their respect and their honor. They gave of something else that was also much more valuable. They gave of their time, their sacrifice, their journey, their adoration, their worship. Those things indicate that they gave their hearts, their soul, their mind and strength. Are you willing to give your greatest treasures? See, this story reminds me of the choices that we all have. We can strive to find success in status, education, and wealth. Or we can realize that those things will never bring us the value and satisfaction that we strive for. Maybe you've been pursuing status, education, and wealth, but you know in your heart that those things are like pots of gold at the end of a rainbow. And no matter how much you chase after them, they will always be just out of reach. You see, as soon as you get the bigger house, you have to keep working to keep the money coming in to afford those things. As soon as you get the nicer car, the nicer holidays, you have to ensure that you keep the income coming in to maintain those things. If you give your life to those things, it will be an endless pursuit. Those are not bad things. It's okay to want education. It's okay to do well and have status. And it's okay to have wealth. As long as you put it in its proper perspective. As long as you know that those things are not everything in life. See, maybe you're the type of person who is driven. You put in the hours, you get the sales, you earn the bonuses, you find it hard to rest. Weekends are just more days to work. And maybe you are chasing something that you will never find. Maybe this Christmas you will have to pause. You will have to rest. Will you use that moment to reevaluate your priorities. Maybe like the wise men, you feel like you've been traveling far. You've been searching for a while. And you haven't given up on your search. Just like the wise men, you are seeking, you are curious. There's that niggle in your mind and your heart that tells you all this stuff will one day fade away. And you know, you know, deep inside your heart, you know that there is more to this life. You know, they didn't come to Jesus with a prayer request. They weren't seeking him because they needed a healing or they needed a miracle. They didn't need him because they were somehow weak. Actually, they were successful people, strong people, people who had arrived people who had status, wealth, education, people who, from the outside looking in, you would think they had everything that they needed. They wouldn't need Jesus or God, but they still knew that there was more to this life. Maybe you feel like your life is actually going okay. You're fine financially, your health is okay, your job's going fine, and people would describe you as successful. 
And maybe today you find yourself in an unexpected place. Maybe a friend has shared this talk with you, or maybe you weren't expecting to discover the answer to the deep questions can be found wrapped in swaddling clothes and laying in a manger. Maybe you find yourself reconsidering some things that you've previously just walked away from. I invite you today to surrender the treasures that you've been striving for. And I ask you to surrender the greatest treasure you have, which is your heart at the feet of this baby. You see, this adventure of faith, this Christmas story reminds us that everyone can find a place before Jesus. We've looked at Mary's story. We've looked at Joseph's story. And this week we've looked at the wise men. All three different characters, all three different struggles and challenges and things that they faced in life. And maybe you're not like Mary, and maybe you're not like a Joseph, and maybe you're more like the wise men. And maybe you're curious and seeking and searching and looking. And even though you've got everything you need, you still feel like there's something more to this life. You see, I think that's what really made them wise men. They knew there was something more. I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to invite you to surrender your life to Jesus. God came to earth wrapped up as a little baby to show us and tell us exactly what God was like. To show you how much you're loved and to give you purpose in life. And maybe this is all new, but today could be a moment for you when you surrender your life to Jesus. I'm gonna just pray now if that's okay. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your goodness. Thank you that you sent your son to earth. God, I just pray for everyone today, wherever they are in their journey, whether the life is all together and everything is going so well, but they have that niggle inside their hearts that said, yes, there's something more to life. God, I just thank you that you invite the wise men as well. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray, amen. Hey, if you'd like any more information or want to chat with us a bit more about some of the stuff we've talked about today, we'd really love to hear from you. Please get in touch, put a comment on the chat below. You can reach out through the website to the YouTube channel and get in touch with us. We'd love to just journey with you and help just show you more about this amazing Jesus. Before you go, I just want to say one quick little announcement. You know, tomorrow morning, Monday morning, I'm so excited that we are, as a congregation, going to be able to bless a whole bunch of people in our town. You know, this lockdown season and this whole pandemic has been really tough for a lot of families and a lot of people. Children have gone hungry and families have, have suffered with hunger. And one thing that we are practically able to do about it is some bags of hope. Now, Elaine leads the Make Lunch and TLG organization that we're part of here within New Life Church. And she has orchestrated with her team and the contacts that they've got that we're able to provide a bag of hope, which includes some food and some uh, toys and some stuff for the family, as well as some vouchers. And we've been able to do that. And tomorrow we're going to be able to bless 51 different families in our local community. And I just think that's a wonderful thing to just bless others and love others. Let's be people who do whatever we can. Let's do everything we can to reach everyone we can. You know, have an amazing rest of the day. Have a great week. It's Christmas coming up this week. I hope you've done all your shopping. And please join us this afternoon for the carol service. I can't wait to see you again later on. Bye-bye.
Thank you.